Okay. It's not. It doesn't look like it's recording, Caitlin. Uh, yep, go for it. Okay, um, then, okay. Welcome to the Artist Sessions. I'm Janice Cotter, Gallery Manager at Pomo Arts. Uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Tonight we are experimenting again and the, uh, we seem to have had a few issues. This is our first attempt at holding an opening reception for a group exhibition in a live online format. I'd like to thank Caitlin Hill, our uh, communications uh, coordinator for helping out with this. I'm still a little frazzled. Uh, I, I'd also like to thank the Pomo Arts Board of Directors, as well as say how grateful we are for the financial support we receive from the province of British Columbia and the city of Port Moody. I know that Councillor Zoe Royer has messaged that she will be watching and uh, she is uh, going to be messaging us saying hi. She always attends our opening receptions when they're live in person. When I started planning for Igniting Hope, I created an inspiration board of, of um, ideas for the image that would be used to promote the exhibition. When it was all laid out, it reminded me of the work of Emily Nunes, both the colors and the, the various concepts and ideas that had been collected on the inspiration board. Emily is a young artist who was awarded a solo exhibition um, at Pomo Arts in the summer of 2019 through our Quiam Choice Scholarship Award. I reached out to her to see if she would be interesting in interested in creating something from this to use for our promotional images. The painting that you see on the behind the titles is what was created, Nature's Daughter. So many thanks to Emily. You'll meet her as we scroll through the digital gallery and uh, meet the artists. Many thanks to uh, Emily for that. And Igniting Hope was intended to be an in, a gallery installed exhibition at Pomo Arts in April. Due to the pandemic, it was postponed and is now being presented as a digital exhibition. I'm grateful to the artists for their flexibility and for trusting us in the transition to the online presentation of their work. We had many wonderful submissions, but we were only able to include a small selection of them in this digital exhibition. This evening, we have 23 participating artists in the exhibition, and most of them are here this evening to be able to uh, say a few words, rather than me rambling on about them. I've asked them to introduce themselves as we sc scroll through this exhibition. By the way, you can um, scroll through the exhibition with us. It, you can find it on pomoarts.ca on our exhibitions page. So first up this evening, we have Deborah Bacos. Deborah, are you, he, um, can you unmute and say a few words? Oh, we- I have muted myself. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Deborah. Um, I'm an artist from Vancouver. I've been, um, I had a practice at Parker Street Studios for about 10 years. So I've been painting at least that long um, full time. And um, one of the th other things I like to do is organize events. So I'm one of the uh, coordinators and uh, founders of Parker Art Salon. Um, there, it happens every spring. And um, I'm also and part of the art club. I had a practice at Parker Street. 
Sorry. <laughs> the Facebook one <laughs> back into my monitor. <laughs> um, so Deborah, did you want to mention anything about the uh, embroidery series? Okay, yeah, um, I have a sort of a multi a mixed media practice, but I'm working on a project right now that in, uh, is a text based project called the she thread project, which is just basically embroidering women's words and finding common threads in the things that women say. And this piece um, really start one of the ones that started the project is by Greta Thunberg. I have a few on the environment. Um, but her, uh, this is one of her quotes. So most of the project is other people or other women's quotes that inspire or that to have social engaged messages. So obviously this one is about the environment um, as is my other piece, but this one's maybe a little more pointed and a little more uh, recognizable for what it is. Yeah. And uh, am I Thank supposed you. to talk about the other work or are you doing that, Jen? No, yeah. no we will just say a few words this evening yeah. and let well, people can read, go through and click on the various paintings to enlarge them and uh, read more about them. So thank you, Deborah. Enjoy. Um, now we are moving on to Tiffany Blaze. And I know she was here earlier, um, but we may have lost her. So I will read a few words about Tiffany. Um, Tiffany is a Vancouver-based artist who makes contemporary landscape and seascape paintings fueled by her fascination with capturing emotionally charged scenes on canvas. Her abstract work unites the physical landscape with the world of the mind. She says that her art practice is a journey rooted in the exploration of thoughts and nature, and she wants to portray the connection between our inner nature and the landscape that surrounds us. So uh, Tiffany has done several um, paintings. She works a lot in water and it has, uh, the issue of the raise, rising uh, waters in, in the ocean was very important to her in climate change. You can read more about it um, when you scroll through the exhibition. She's also created a video. Next up, we have Kat Brackley. And Kat is here to say a few words. Kat, can you unmute? Uh Thank you for having me. My name is Kat Brackley. I'm a professional photographer. I shoot travel and portraits. I've been shooting for about 16 years. So some of my travel imagery is in this exhibit. And climate change is a topic for me that's uh, extremely important. And I do have a video as well that you can uh, watch in there as well. And I wanted to say thanks to Pomo Arts for doing this because I think it's uh, wonderful. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> Apologies again for the uh, delay and the technical difficulties. Oh, no worries. So with each of these, you can click on and enlarge the, the images and watch Kat's video at the end. Our next artist is Bridget Catchpole. And I know Bridget isn't here this evening, but she will be joining us next week. Um, Bridget is, lives and works in Vancouver, and she also has a studio at the Parker Street Studios. She received her jewelry training at the Vancouver Jewelry Art and Design Program and has a BFA in studio art at Concordia in, in Montreal. From empty beauty product packaging to plastic remnants collected along the Pacific Northwest coast, Bridget incorporates cast off materials, affording them equal value to traditional gemstones. For more than 10 years, her focus looks at patterns of plastic waste from throwaway, from throwaway culture and how it has become a pervasive presence in the natural environment. These self harvested materials become a departure point for broader topics of repair, not replace as well as partiality involving worth and waste, blurring notions of what is precious, valuable, and lasting. 
and I'm scrolling through Bridget's various pieces. And this from the piece that was just that vitreous marker, this is the original rope that she found on a beach in Hawaii, a lava beach. Our next artist is Tisa Christie. And Tisa was is with us. Yeah, Tisa, I'm still here. Would you like to say a few words? Um, yep, can you hear me? Yes, I can all hear right. you. That's great. Um, and thank you very much for having me and for doing all this, Janice. Um, so with my work, well, I'm a Port Moody based watercolor artist and all of my work revolves around um, native species to British Columbia. Um, and a lot of it is for connecting people to nature and educating people about the different species that live here. So the, uh, the three paintings that I have, they're all um, species that can be found in uh, Vancouver, in the Tri-Cities actually. Uh, we've got Pacific Bleeding Hearts, um, a Western Trillium, and a Great Blue Heron. Thank you, Tisa. Uh, we will move on now, and our next artist is Michelle D'Souza Dermont. And Michelle is not here tonight. My apologies, I thought she would be, and I did not have anything prepared for her. Um, Michelle has included artwork from a series called The Elementals, and she talks about it in her video that she's included here. I, so please have a look. She also um, has a profile. Each artist has a profile on our um, artist directory that you can click on to find out more information about the artist and see other types of work they do as well. So moving on, um, the next artist is Do Dorothy Doherty, and Dorothy is with us, was with us. Oh, no, nope, Dorothy's here. Hi, I'm here. Yes, <laughs> thank, thanks, thanks again, Janice, for the opportunity to exhibit with the Port Moody Art Gallery. Um, um, I'm basically a mixed media artist and a ceramic artist. I, my training uh, goes back to uh, when I was 17 years old and started with the Vancouver School of Art, which is now Emily Carr. Um, many decades later, I went to uh, Capilano University and uh, took art all over again until it, um, it closed. Um, and I, I'm currently working out of Portside Studios, except at the moment, um, I'm um, isolating. Um, it's been 80 days. <laughs> That's a long time. Um, anyway, um, to make it short, um, the images that I've presented here are, um, are about our ecology. Um, and hopefully these images will create new ways of thinking. Um, and that as individuals, we will be moved to uh, take the sort of action that is necessary uh, to uh, lead to a healthier planet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. And our Monica, I thought she would be here as well. So I am not uh, going to speak um, to her, but she does say that her um, just reading from the digital gallery that her artistic ability to exhibit touchable mixed media artworks that bring awareness of our society's carbon footprint, exploring the effects of climate change crisis with a, with a focus on wildfire, melting glaciers and rising sea levels while also examining the, what the arts can do to impact and improve the future of our local environment. And um, we've included several of her artworks. The um, image on the right is a detail and then you can click on the full size image on the left and look at the larger versions of them and read through it. Now, Alison Grapes is not here, I know. Um, she is an artist who is originally from Nova Scotia, but she's lived most of her life in 
or pardon me, she's originally from Ontario, but has lived most of her life in Nova Scotia. And it's a four hour time difference. So she knew that it would just be a bit too late for her to be here tonight. Um, she received her Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design and a Bachelor of Education from Memorial University. When she was um, visiting family in the Ottawa River last year, she was uh, greatly impacted by the flooding that was there. Her, her brother and sister-in-law, uh, or pardon me, her sister and brother-in-law live um, in that area of their backyard, backs on the Ottawa River. And so she was inspired to paint two versions of this painting um, of the swings, the flooded swings. And she said the second painting is an abstract version and it's flat shapes painted with, with uh, bright colors are an analogy for how many, how many choose to not look under the surface at the impact flooding has on everyone's lives. Our next artist is Shannon Harvey. And um, she is here this evening. Shannon, would you like to um, unmute and say if you yes. were to introduce I have, I have unmuted. <laughs> Hi, Janice, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for putting this together. Um, even though we can't be in person, it's still really great to see everybody's work online. Um, I've been an artist for 20 plus years. I've been living in Vancouver um, with a studio in Strathcona for about 15 years. Um, I've been with the Eastside Culture Crawl for quite a few of those. And um, I'm a mixed media artist. So I've done a lot of painting. I, I've done mural painting, uh, printmaking, like more recently in the last 10 years, um, and mixed media, also sculpture as well. So, a lot of the work that I've done is inspired by kind of issues that I wanted to understand more. So one of them was about our relationship with the animals that we use for food. So some of these prints that you're seeing are based on actual people that I went to visit uh, who raise animals in a very humane and ethical way. Um, and I, I often feel in my work, it's really important to sort of look at the personal stories. Um, Cause I think there's a lot of change that can lead from sort of everyday people taking really huge steps um, to change things for the better. So that's what some of these prints are showing. They're, they, they are people like the water buffalo, Marianne runs a farm on Vancouver Island and raises water buffalo and Kathy Steves, she raises, um, belted Galloways, which is a certain type of cow. So they're all, they're all doing this in a, very, um, in a very humane way. And uh, yeah, I, I sort of like to show um, that these are people who are quite powerful doing things in a small but big way. Thank you, Shannon. Um, and now we will move on to Allison Keenan. Allison, would you like to unmute and? Whoop, just a sec, Allison, you're not. Um... Okay, now you're unmuted. Yeah, go okay, ahead. Thank you. thank you. Thanks, Janice. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I'm so happy to be surrounded by so many wonderful artists. Um, I have a studio, a home studio in Vancouver. I've had it for some time. I uh, create paintings and drawings and um, some collages, which is new for me, and also some political embroideries, which I was prompted with an idea from Deb Bacchus, and I have put three of my pieces into her project, and I'm really quite pleased with how that worked out. But this series here uh, for Pall Mall, um, I called it Avian Fables Collages, which was the first collages that I started to think seriously about, instead of going into painting and drawing, but to try and work out how to cut and paste a little here. And it evolves out of a body of paintings that I've produced for several years in large murals and canvases. 
And I place the mythology of avians as avatars of messages, whether positive or ironic, and sometimes hopeful, to underscore the context and content of my process. While the images of beautiful birds are appealing, the underlining message refers to human-induced climate change and the now damaged environment. I prefer to work on my studio in several projects at the same time. For the work of avian fables, collages, I research ways to recycle and reuse my art materials. And this experimental challenge seems to be a perfect segue for me into mixed media collage. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. We will scroll down through, and you, there, Allison has a video as well. Our next artist is Elvira Kravinkova, and I apologize, Elv Elvira, if I've pronounced your name wrong. Um, would do you like to um, introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Janice. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you and uh, former arts team for this uh, virtual exhibition that I guess is a lot of work. So, and uh, thank you for having me here. So I'm a Port Moody based artist and uh, I work in different mediums, but um, usually I prefer oils. So, and um, uh, what inspires me, it's just the beauty of nature around us and just ordinary people that I meet because I also paint portraits and really enjoy doing it. And um, with uh, the series of those landscapes that were submitted to the exhibition I wanted and they were painted just around us in our neighborhood in dry cities in our parks so I just wanted to show the beauty of our nature the world that is really close to us that we can just walk around and uh, we do it every day. Sometimes we don't even pay attention to it. So I just wanted to show our viewers how beautiful it is and that we really have to take care of our nature to keep it beautiful. And well, let's try to keep it undamaged for our future generations. That was my main idea. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elvira. Thank you. We are moving on to Alicia, and I know she had planned to be here, but we seem to have lost her this, e um, uh, this evening. We were communicating just before this was supposed to start. Um, so she has uh, some just some text that's on the um, uh, digital gallery. She says her artistic practice is centered in two dimensional work, including painting and drawing on canvas and paper, as well as textural art and digitally altered imaging. She engages with representational urban and expressionist styles and explores topics identif including identity, gender, women's issues, and indigenous subalternity. She draws inspiration from wildlife, the ocean, and the earth. And she has two uh, paintings in the exhibition and has included a small video as well. And when I was um, looking through uh, Alicia's uh, website and information about her, I discovered that she is also a poet. And so that was really interesting to see the, the two diverse styles of, of her art world. Next up, we have Cassidy at Lu Oh, Cassidy. Cassidy. No worries, Lucia. you're not the first one. You won't be the last. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No worries. Um, could you pronounce it for me? Uh, Lutane. Lutein. So not Thank at all you. how it looks. <laughs> no. no so I will get you to say a few words about your painting, Whaling Station Bay. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, my name is Cassie Lutain, and I'm a recent graduate of the University of Victoria. Um, just finished up my Bachelor of Fine Arts in Visual Arts, and I primarily work with painting and sculpture. And this project in particular, I was looking into um, creating an abstract landscape as sort of like a catalyst for feelings of nostalgia and feelings of memory. Um, and I'm really interested in exploring how that ties into environmental landscapes. And so how this beach in particular um, on Hornby Island uh, was, you know, a lot, of, a lot of memories for me growing up and each time coming back to it, it's almost that everything in your life has changed except the beach has stayed the same. And, but that might always, might not always be the case, um, especially in the coast with certain issues like the, the pipeline that's coming in and threatening our coast. And yeah, so I think I find art is a really great way of sparking that discussion and igniting hope, you might say, in terms of um, just what we can do and at, with ourselves and our community to conserve that for future generations. Thank you so much, Cassidy. Uh, we are going to move on now to Monique Martin. And Monique, you are you're unmuted and able to say a few words. Sure. Um, my work uh, is very concept based and um, speaks a lot about the social issues within the world and how humans connect to the world around them. I exhibit a lot. I exhibit nationally and internationally. I also teach at a fine arts school. I find that art is a way to talk to people that makes sense to them in a different way than reading something or hearing it on TV. So some of my pieces involve um, mediums that are not uh, archival, like the one you see right now on the screen, which is of uh, fish and they are Saskatchewan fish and they're printed with used motor oil, which was inspired by an oil spill in my own city. There's also a piece in the exhibition that um, is a vintage, that's the one, is a vintage um, print from 1886. It's a vi vintage lithograph, so really it's like a photocopy in our time in history. Anyway, it's a photocopy, but I printed on top of that plastic water bottles because I really believe that people need to think about the end life of the things we add to the world, not just um, adding things uh, at nauseum and not thinking about where they're going to end. Uh, I, I work uh, really hard in my studio. I, I put in an awful lot of hours into my work and create in all different mediums. I do sculpture, ceramics, painting, printmaking, printmaking being my, um, probably my favorite medium. Um, you didn't mention where you were from, Monique. Oh, I'm from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, but I'm hardly ever here. If the COVID oh. wasn't on, I travel a lot with my work. Um, exhibiting and lecturing and giving workshops and whatnot. So uh, I travel an awful lot when I'm not at work teaching. Okay, thank you. I just, yeah. I felt terrible because we, of the technical delay and you have a time difference as well, so. <laughs> oh, it's not a big time difference. It's okay, I can stay up late. Okay, <laughs> and um, uh, Monique will be joining us on the artist sessions next week for a discussion, um, for further discussions. Now we have another, our other Monique, this is Monique Montut Firth, and she is here to, she will speak on her collage piece and her artist. Introduce yourself, please, Monique, sorry. Hi, no, that's okay. Um, thank you for having me, Janice, and the Port Moody Art Center. Uh, my name is Monique Motufer, and in this show, I'm um, showing this piece as collage work. I am a multidisciplinary artist and an arts instructor. Um, and uh, this piece is a little bit different for me. I sometimes work with paper, well, very often. And I wanted to think about collage maybe as a landscape and what might happen if um, I tried to uh, work with the idea of landscape. And so that's a very large piece. It has uh, probably 
thousands of uh, cutouts. It's all hand cut. And as, as I began layering it, started to think about the different decades. So there seems to be three different uh, time eras in here and uh, just sort of um, happened because of the format of the magazines I was using. It was kind of an interesting effect. And so it seems that the images actually sort of become the landscape. And I wanted us to maybe just think about that, the, those consumer images and how they sort of stay with us like many of the other artists here tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Monique. Our next artist is Emily Nunez, and you will recognize Nature's Daughter. Emily, do you want to say a few words to introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Emily. Um, I'm a visual artist and illustrator from Maple Ridge. Uh, I received my BFA from UBC in 2017, and I've been a full-time artist since last July. I work in a variety of mediums for my paintings. I use acrylic and gouache, and I've recently started up pottery as well, um, merging my illustrations onto my handmade ceramics. Uh, I was happy to be a part of this exhibition and make a piece for the poster. Um, I make uh, narrative paintings that look at women's relationship with our landscape and nature. I feel a very close connection with the natural world, the plants, the animals. Um, there's this exploration of that connection in my paintings where uh, women merge with their surroundings and almost control it. This seems like a really relevant uh, to the topic of climate change as our actions directly affect our planet. I hope that by painting and focusing on the magic of our land and how important our connection is that we can look at our choices we make when our world is so fragile. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. And Adrian Peacock. Now I know Adrian was here earlier. We seem to have lost Adrian as well. No, I'm here. No, you are here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right. Okay, Adrian, would you like to introduce yourself and say a few words? Yes, my name's, thanks Jen. My name's Adrian Peacock and I live in Belcara and um, I, my former life, I was, I am still an ecologist. And so when Janice mentioned the theme of climate change, it, it really spoke to me. And I created um, two pieces specifically. The, the, it, it seemed to me that the orange background seemed to represent both the hope and the horror of climate change. The hope is that perhaps with the pandemic and, and rethinking, having the time to rethink some of our values that we will realize that we could do this, uh, that we could actually turn this around. But if we don't, um, I am very worried that we'll be looking at the upper corner of fires and, and drought. And so uh, it, it just seemed to come together rather quickly. And uh, I really enjoyed painting it. I paint primarily in, in acrylics, but I also love watercolor and I've been experimenting with some photography. Thank you, Adrian. Our next artist is Marianne Phillips. And once again, I know she was here earlier. And then, oh, she is here. Oh, yay. <laughs> I thought maybe we had lost you. We seem to have lost a few people. So Adrian, or pardon me, Marianne, would you like to say a few words to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, Janice, and uh, thanks for having my work in the show. And uh, it's really nice to meet all the other artists on, on video. And I wish I could see everything in person, but maybe one day we will. Um, yeah, my name's Marianne Phillips, and I live in New Westminster, BC. And uh, I'm an artist that has worked in the various media, mostly mixed media. Um, and since I retired, I uh, found myself being drawn back to my first love when I was much younger, which was to work more with fiber and uh, textiles, especially reclaimed textiles and uh, nature dyeing and stitching and eco printing. And um, I was very inspired by the uh, climate change 
marches with Greta Thunberg and the children and young adults here in Vancouver. And um, was really thinking about uh, a project, some projects I really wanted to do. And they made me think again of when I was a child and how children are so connected to nature and the magic of nature and uh, the wonderful uh, ability that being in nature gives you to uh, enhance your imagination. And so I just had this idea about the forest spirit and uh, started to work on, on uh, this needle felted mixed media kind of piece. And she just kept telling me what she wanted me to do. And so I, I uh, did that. And um, so I have the forest spirit in the show. And um, I also have been doing some stitching on some reclaimed textiles. And uh, I did the forest fairy loves bees. And um, I used some uh, imagery from photographs of angels that I took in, in Italy to uh, start my fairy. And then I just embroidered randomly using some reclaimed textiles. So it's, it's a really lovely way to spend my retirement, that's for sure. So thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Now we will move on to Alex Sandvoss and um, her series, Influencers. Alex, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Alex Sandvoss. Um, I'm a self-taught artist and I make art about issues that I care about or things that frustrate me. Um, but I like all my work to have an underlying feeling of hope and to inspire feelings of connection. Um, so this um, collection is called uh, The Influencer. So it's about climate change, the clothing industry, social media influencers, and yeah, basically everyone else involved, like us, just the complicit consumers. So um, I think people don't realize how dirty the clothing industry is. Um, and so I wanted to take this opportunity to like educate on that topic in a parodical and satirical way. So hence Barbie's face. Um, yeah, I wanted to make subversive images that were also humorous. Um, to me, she's kind of like the face of capitalism. So anyways, that's, yeah, that's what those are. Basically they're screenshots off YouTube of social media influencers. And then I put Barbie's face over top and anonymized them. And they're just holding up like their recent clothing purchases and boasting about them and all that good stuff. So anyways, yeah, thank you guys for coming and for taking the time out of your night tonight. <laughs> Thank, thank you for for being here, Alex. It was it's really nice to have the artists actually speaking for themselves. This is an unusual situation. Um, and Alex did a video as well and goes into a little more detail. I'm sorry, some of the videos clip <laughs> with the artwork. No, it's um, all good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and um, Chantala Singh is not here tonight. I will let you look through the gallery and you can find out more. She also has a page. All most, I think all of the artists have their page on our artist directory. So you can click on it and find out more about her. And our next artist is Lee Chin T. And she was, is here she is still here. Lee, would you like to unmute and introduce yourself? Oh, I've unmuted you. No? Fine. Yes, I'm right here. Thanks, okay. Janice. Thanks, Janice. Thanks. Oh, you're uh, yep. Thanks, Port Moody Arts, for having me right here. I'm Lee. Can you hear me? I'm Lee. Yes. Hi. We can hear you. Great, sorry. I'm born and raised in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I came to Canada about eight, nine years ago. And I'm now a visual artist and an illustrator for children's book. 
um, based out of Broad Mountain, Coquitlam, a neighborhood where you get to see plenty of bears in summer. And it explains why I painted this painting, uh, these pictures, this painting of baby bear who lost his home. Because the parents, the mommy, the mommy bear um, and the siblings have been taken away because humans act, humans ignorance. Yeah, it's a sad painting, but it's presented in a way that children would relate and children would want to look at it more. Thank you. And you've also, your other painting is commenting on the bushfires in Australia. Yes, I was back in Malaysia when it happened. We saw it on the news, it's devastating. So, but when I look at it, I, it reminds me of the wildfires that happens in Canada every year. So I thought to myself, is there anything we can do about it? Because it, it seems like it ha it's happening everywhere every year. So what else can we do? I think um, it is important for the humans to um, find inner peace within. So we have to, everyone has to agree there's an urgent need for more greens, more trees, more plants and not bigger highways, not taller buildings, not winning wars. We need to direct the resources that we have to save the planet Earth. First, by planting more trees, remedy. We have to save the animals' habitat as well as our own habitat. Thank you, Lee. Thank now, you, we, we will move on to our last artist, Ash Woodworth, and, or yes, Ash Woodworth. And I know Ash is here to talk about her series falling. Hi, how are you guys? First, thank you Janice and Pomo Arts for having us tonight. I really appreciate you guys uh, finding interesting solutions during this time. First of all, my series falling is waterfalls and they serve as a source of healing and purification for me while I draw them personally. Um, they're meditative as I draw them and water has a sense of power to it as well as a source of healing. And these are the drawings that I've done recently right now. I'm returning to the series right now and in doing them larger and I found that they're very necessary right now during this uh, COVID time and during our ecological time at the moment. Ash, where do you live in Vancouver? I do. I'm from Southern California originally, and I migrated here about seven years ago, first to Vancouver Island and then to Vancouver. Okay. So Thank British you, Columbia and the environment is very important to me here. Yes, it's a lot different than California. <laughs> very much so, yeah. I'm very happy to be here currently. Um, thank you to our artists. We'll go back to a gallery view in a moment. I just wanted to say that um, the artwork is all for sale unless it has um, NFS for not for sale marked on it. If you're interested in it, you can contact the artist directly by connecting with their link on to their uh, their. Their contact information is on their artist directory profile and the artists will not pay any artwork commissions. So 100% of the proceeds goes directly to the artist if you are interested in purchasing anything. So we're hoping to support our artists in this way. Uh, so I'm going to go to a screenshot, a gallery view here so that we can see all of the artists. Well, are we seeing all the artists? I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth there. Um, so that we can see all of the artists and um, I will say thank you to all of our artists for staying, for being here this evening and apologize profusely 
for the technical difficulties in this experiment. Um, and I sure appreciate it. Now we'll be having some of you back again on for the artist sessions next week. But um, I certainly appreciate you all coming out tonight for the exhibition op opening reception. And Monique Martin, I noticed that you were smart enough to bring your glass of wine with you. <laughs> it's it's an opening reception. I think mm -hmm. you all should have had your glass of wine with you. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you to everyone who came out tonight, who stuck around long enough to see the see us go through the ex a tour through the exhibition and meet some of the artists in person and get to view the work. You can view the digital exhibition on our website. And by all means, even you can email the artists through their contact information just to express your thoughts about their artwork and connect with them. So thank you very much for coming. And um, we will be finishing, ending this now. Um,